Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to be looking at Adobe Camera Raw. That's Camera Raw 7.2, which is the version of Camera Raw that comes with Photoshop CS6. There's a big point here that Camera Raw 7, or 7.2, is significantly more advanced under the hood than version 6 or earlier. In other words, if you're using Photoshop CS6, the algorithms that work with the image underneath, the stuff that you don't even get to see, work a lot better. Put into plain language, one of the big reasons to upgrade from CS5 to CS6 is that you, the simple things that you want to do, the simple adjustments, work much better. Right, now we'll look at this start with well, this one here. We have a butterfly. Um, I think the crop's quite reasonable on this one. This is actually as close as it gets, so we don't want to, we don't want to crop it any tighter. Um, and we don't need to straighten it. We're all looking good. So first of all, we'll start with the basic tab. Color temperature. We could adjust this to make it warmer or cooler. Um, but I think it's actually looking fine. So I'm just going to put as shot. Take us back to where we were. The tint is for correcting uh, any problems that you have with sometimes when you when you move the, the temperature slider, you might find that you're ending up a bit green or a bit magenta. And this will be used to correct that. Our basic adjustment, the first basic adjustment is exposure, which is the overall lightness and darkness of the image. That would be underexposed, and that would be overexposed, and basic, I think the image is pretty well exposed, so we're going to click, type in zero and take it back to where we were. Contrast spreads the information of the around the midpoint. So we're increasing the contrast, decreasing the contrast. You'll very rarely want to decrease the contrast. A lot of images will help with, will, will be happy with just a small increase in contrast. Now, these four sliders here, highlight shadows, whites, and blacks, are the the equivalent of the. Um, this is where you would, in the older versions of Photoshop, you had uh, recovery and fill light. The highlights are the not quite pure whites. They're 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 the bright colors which are not strongly white. Shadows are the dark colors that are not fully black. Whites are fully white and blacks are fully black. So white sets the white point, black sets the black point. And these two adjust the areas just inside that. Often you'll use the highlights to recover information in the whites. So if you've if you've got uh, if you just want to pull back a little bit of information there that your whites have gone too solid, you might find that decreasing this one might help you a bit, but I don't think this image really needs that. I'll leave that at zero. And similarly, shadows would be, would often you'd be lightening the shadows just to try and uh, bring some information back if you had something that was solid black. Um, again, we don't really need that. But what I do notice is that if we drop that down a bit, it tends to make these areas here darker. It makes the butterfly, the black on the butterfly look a little darker as well. And that's kind of helping the image. So even though that's not really what it's intended for, it's working well. And that's all that matters. Whites, setting the white point, this is, yeah, so I think we were, we were fine at zero. Doesn't need any adjustment there. And blacks will affect the, obviously, the, 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 the depth of the black of the butterfly. And it's also affecting the, the background. It's increasing the contrast rather a lot. I'm going to leave that back where it was. Clarity is localized contrast. So as we increase the clarity, if I'll, I'll pull that right up, we get quite a brittle look and it's really brought out all this detail. It can often bring out detail that you don't want, such as noise. If we use a negative value, we get a soft, dreamy look. And that can sometimes be quite appealing for, for, some, for some things, especially in black and white. Um, most images often just like a little bit. So I'm just going to leave that just a little bit there. Vibrance is the intensity of colors that are not fully saturated. So saturation is how much color there is in an image. Like no saturation, lots of saturation. I'm going to put that back at zero. Now you notice when I drag that up there, the greens went very, very green. If I drag the vibrance up, the greens aren't quite so green. So the vibrance works on the colors that are not already very strongly saturated. So that by 
increasing the vibrance, you don't sort of blow out uh, the, the colours. Often if you want to increase your saturation, I'd say use vibrance. If you want to decrease the saturation, use the saturation control. Now that gives us a basic um, setup of our image. Our image is basically right. From here we're going to move on to... Uh, generally the idea that, for, that Adobe intended was that you'd start with this one and work from top to bottom and then move across the image, across these controls this way. However, I tend to like a more non-linear approach to it all. I'm going to go straight to this one, the HSL Grayscale tab. And this one allows us to adjust the hue, the saturation and the luminance of individual colours, which is really useful. We want to increase the saturation, not of the greens, we want to increase the saturation of the oranges and yellows. Let's bring this oranges up, bring the yellows up. Take that quite a long way. Maybe the reds as well. Now here's a hint. I'll put these back at zero. 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 I'm going to use the targeted adjustment tool, this one here. And I'm going to click in this area. And I'm going to go up and it will adjust. It will it will look at which what colours it needs to adjust. So it's going to work on the oranges and yellows and bring those up. Just those ones only. I might try another spot down here. Yeah, so it's rare that you'll want to go as full as a hundred, but in this case I think it was possibly justified. Now I think we can get a bit more here. I'm going to go back to the basic tab and I'm going to pull up the vibrance. And then try taking down the greens. And I'll also go to the luminance tab. So that saturation is how much colour there is in each in, there is in each colour. And the luminance tab we turn how bright each colour is. So the greens will take down, because we want to put our attention on the butterfly. The yellows will take down, because you, that will increase the, the intensity of the colours. The orange is down as well. And now we've got a much more strongly orange butterfly there. Now, also we can use Convert to Grayscale. We're not going to do that here, because we've, this is a, an image which really needs colour. detail we have sharpening and noise reduction there is not much noise in here because this was shot uh, ISO 1600 with a Canon 7D and 1600 on a, 7, on a 60 this was shot at ISO 1600 on a Canon 6D uh, and uh, 1600 on a 60 is not very noisy and you can see if I go here and zoom up to a hundred percent now we're looking at the let's make sure I'm holding out the space bar. There's this there is a small bit of noise in here, but gee, it's pretty minor, especially since we're looking at a 20 megapixel image. A lot of detail in there. Any adjustments you do on this tab, you want to be using the um, you want to be looking at it at 100 percent We could remove some of that noise. We'll just drag this one up here. It's already going down. The, if, if we drag this one up this way and this one down this way, we will get a smeared look, which is uh, rather unpleasant. So that's too much. Let's try putting this one in the middle. Noise. We want to apply the minimum noise. There we go, that's, there's, there's still a tiny bit of noise there, but it's not very strong. And as soon as we zoom out, back to fit and view, that's invisible. You don't see the noise there at all. And we could print that to quite a large size and we wouldn't see the noise or the noise reduction. Lastly, we'll go to the effects tab and we will add a post crop vignette. So we could add... If we go to this tab here, we can we can remove lens vignetting here, but that's 
for the vignetting from the lens, we actually want to make this as an effect, and the vignette here is much more effective because if we crop the image, it will follow the crop that we make. There we go. That, just adding a bit of darkness around the edges means that we will focus on the butterfly. We can bring the highlights back a little bit, and that will this will reduce the artificial look of the the uh, effect because these brighter parts won't be vignetted. Now I'm quite happy with that. I think that's a significant improvement. That's all we need to do for that one. 